Theodore Roosevelt deserves his place on Mount Rushmore as he has had an astounding influence on America's perspective of the environment through his policies and initiatives regarding the conservation of water and land. Roosevelt developed a love for the wilderness when he moved out to a western ranch by himself following the death of both his mother and his wife on Valentine's Day of 1884. It was here that he realized the state of the environment and foresaw its eventual demise if nothing were to be done about it. However, he could not stay away from the spotlight for long and ended up returning to politics in 1889. Theodore Roosevelt assumed the presidency in 1901. He was the first environmentalist president of the United States. Before taking office, America's resources were dwindling and tensions were rising among its western groups. During his presidency, Roosevelt signed into law 18 monuments and enacted the Antiquities Act in June of 1906. This act allowed him and his successors to proclaim historic landmarks, historic or prehistoric structures, and other objects of historic or scientific interest in federal ownership as national monuments. During the late 1800s, many people who had migrated to the western states began to mine and farm. Their mining machinery, such as the Long Tom, used massive amounts of water, water which had been previously used only by the Mexican Americans. Disputes broke out at the thought of sharing the water, and when private irrigation companies came to take claims to the riverbed sections, bitter fights evolved. Tensions arose as the water shortage worsened. Roosevelt pushed Congress to allow the federal government to help western states build reservoirs to conserve water. Finally, a year later, the Reclamation Act of 1902 was passed. This act channeled the funds from the sale of western lands into dam construction for irrigation. It also decided that the federal government could decide where and how water was distributed. The effectiveness of this act was actually felt decades later and is still being felt today. Nowadays, there are huge reservoirs and lakes on land that was formerly covered in barren, dry valleys. I urge that the broad plan for the development of our waterways recommended by the Inland Waterways Commission be put in effect without delay. It provides for a comprehensive system of waterway improvement extending to all the uses of the waters and benefits to be derived from their control, including navigation, the development of power, the extension of irrigation, the drainage of swamp and overflow lands, the prevention of soil wash, and the purification of streams for water supply. Theodore Roosevelt, January 22, 1909. Theodore Roosevelt has always been passionate about the natural resources that the Earth has to offer. He was especially happy with the government's establishment of Yellowstone National Park in 1872. He admired John Muir of California, who helped Congress create Yosemite National Park in 1890. Muir had said, as age comes on, one source of enjoyment after another is closed, but nature sources never fail, in his book, Our National Parks. Roosevelt took this idea to heart with his conservation efforts. Before Roosevelt became president, people could harvest as much lumber as they desired, disregarding the maturity of the lumber and harvesting overwhelming amounts of it. The mindset of the people in this era was that the wood would never run out. By the mid-1800s, though, Nature lovers started to realize that the hunters, timber cutters, and miners not only threatened the environment, but an entire ecosystem. As a young man in the Dakota Territory, Roosevelt saw firsthand how human activities could harm the environment. Completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869 had pushed civilization westward, and rail lines and the towns that built up around them cut gashes through the pristine grazing land of the buffalo or bison. The buffalo in this area were being hunted for their hides since it was highly priced and the trains made for easy transportation. The bison were nearly brought to extinction in just over two decades. Theodore Roosevelt also visited Pelican Island in Florida. This island was inhabited with an abundance of shorebirds. At that time, the demand for plumes for women's hats was very high, which led to the near extinction of these birds. It was not until the 1900s that any action was taken. Aware of the nearing extinction of the shorebirds, in 1903, Roosevelt created the Pelican Island Bird Reservation. This was the first of many refuges that he established. In 1905, Roosevelt created the Bureau of Forestry and assigned Gifford Pinkout as chief forester. 
Peacock believed that timberland should be managed scientifically, with selected trees harvested and others left to grow, so that rain would not cause excessive soil erosion, runoff, flooding, or water pollution. However, the timbermen protested this idea strongly, as it was harsh on their spending budget. Congress was not able to resist the request for long, and attached a rider to the Agriculture Appropriations Bill. This rider limited the President's power on setting aside land in the western forest lands for preservation. In response to this intense rider, Roosevelt signed off on an additional 16 million acres of forest land into federal protection before signing the rider. Altogether, he preserved around 200 million acres of forest land and built approximately 51 refuges for the protection of wildlife. Theodore Roosevelt was one of those influential presidents of all time, certainly worthy of having the honor of being displayed next to three of the most important men in the history of the United States. During his seven and a half years of presidency, Roosevelt was able to bring about changes that paved the way to a better country for both citizens of the time and future American citizens. He signed into law far-reaching, long-lasting government projects such as the Hoover Dam, the Salt Valley Project, and the Roosevelt Dam. These projects not only covered the barren and dry valleys, but they also created jobs during a time of a diminishing economy. Even today, they provide fresh water and hydroelectric power for the citizens of America. One can see the vast impact that Roosevelt's irrigation policies still have on us Americans today. Of equal importance is the impact of his forest conservation that is still felt. Roosevelt saw the necessity of compromise between two causes, environmental protection and the building of homes. His policy allowed house building to flourish while also raising awareness about the need for conservation of America's forests and the homes of many forms of wildlife. For this reason, the people of today are still able to enjoy many of America's beautiful woodlands and species of wildlife while also using the land's resources. The powerful, famous men whose faces are prominently displayed on Mount Rushmore are George Washington, the father of our nation, Thomas Jefferson, the writer of the Declaration of Independence, and Abraham Lincoln, the abolisher of slavery. Theodore Roosevelt deserves to be honored on Mount Rushmore alongside these most significant Americans because of his revolutionary combination of advocation for environmental conservation along with continual promotion of the general welfare.